Mason. I'm the owner and creator of Amiglos, and I'm here with Josue and Austin, two of the guys from Amiibo Steel. And uh, this is episode zero of the Touch Base podcast, where we'll be kind of figuring out what the hell we're going to be doing. Um, I guess we should figure out whether or not we're going to swear or not, since I just did. <laughs> uh, I don't think. Well, I don't, I don't think a lot of people would mind. Just we uh, obviously we shouldn't like go into like races of seen you know, like obviously if it's not like yeah I think we can't like we'll, we'll be honest like if it happens it happens oops sorry it yeah happens. sure I probably won't but you know you never know what happens yeah exactly you never know what's yeah. gonna happen so we'll, yeah. we'll try to keep it civil and not you know offend people with I curse like a sailor in real life so um <laughs> you know. I'll, I'll try to tone it down for the sake of our listeners. What we're hoping to talk about is uh, Amiibos and anything Amiibo related within the community, customs, news. We're trying not to tread on the uh, on the feet of the Amiibo newscast, which I've been uh, listening from the very beginning to over the past couple days at work. I've right. listened to like eight or nine of them in two days. Um and they're like an hour long each, so it's uh, it's basically what I've been doing at work as I've been doing other things. Um, so try not to tread on their feet, you know, because we want to. There's definitely right. room, I think, for another podcast about Amiibo, but we don't want to just you know be just Amiibo news, and that's not what they are either. But we're trying not to step on feet, and you know, we'd love to have them on here as well at some point. I'm sure. Yeah. Um. So uh, we're going to talk about Amiibo figures, custom Amiibo. Amiibo news, any anything related to games that involve Amiibo, so like Smash, Animal Crossing, which I'm not particularly interested in, but perhaps some one of my other co-hosts are. Um, Love it. <laughs> no shame in it. Um, I personally, like I've said, in like these buildings and on Twitter, haven't bought one. We'll buy one, but that's it. Not necessarily because I don't like them. I just feel like you know. It, they, until they get a really good game that puts like the amiibo use of like the Animal Crossing series to like its full potential, then mm-hmm. I'll be you know buying all of them. If anything, I love them; they look great. But yeah, no. Amiibo got like fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um. Well, so and like yeah, any games that involve amiibo functionality, like I said, Smash, Animal Crossing, the new Star Fox game coming out, um, right. Mario Kart, uh, Twilight Princess HD. Um, Mega Man Legacy Collection that comes out like in next week Tuesday. Exactly, like any mm. of the games that involve Amiibo are fair game, and that means this we could have an entire podcast dedicated to us just ranting about uh, a well, like a Splatoon tournament where we like got our butts handed to us. You know, right? Like, this is this podcast is not going to be limited to as long as it's related to Amiibo in some way. That's what we're going to talk about. Exactly. So, especially, like, we'll talk about things like how a lot of people are upset over the idea of, like, the Mega Man Legacy Collection bundle, you know, how, like, a um, couple of images came out from Destructoid uh, that they had, like, uh, I guess, like, um, they had a review kit sent over to them, and they got the, they got literally the bundle early, and a lot of people were complaining about how it just seemed that the Mega Man Amiibo that is bundled to the game, uh, it's just a repaint, if anything, and it has, like, a smash base, a lot of people were complaining about that. So yeah. things like that, yeah, like, we can always dive into. Um, yeah, it looks a little disappointing. That was kind of sad. That yeah, just, it is. It doesn't come with a, pet, a special box or anything like that. It's just clear. But the figure itself, I mean, Mega Man fans will be interested, but there's nothing special about it besides it being gold. Right. And I think, like, I'll, okay, I'll be completely honest. I did cancel my pre-order. I canceled my pre-order. Did you I really? Like, I really did. I canceled my pre-order. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I'm canceling. No, okay. Oh, Not come on. That's a little <laughs> Wait, but, like, okay, the thing is, like, I'm in the Unbox Live here, okay, I care about it, but that's not my reason for canceling. The thing is, I felt, like, they, I don't know, like, I like Amiibo, like, I like the detail, I like that they put time and effort into it. For me, it just seemed like, a, like, they repainted it and had a smash face into it. That's what I felt of it. Unless it has, like, I don't know, that's how I saw it. Okay, but how is that any different from Gold Mario with the Super Mario series? Like, it's literal. that is literally a repaint of the base Amiibo. Funny enough, it was harder to find the base, <laughs> or, like, the original Amiibo before the uh, Gold Mario came out, but... You're right. And um, but, Mario. I mean, uh, um, exactly, ex- exactly. I mean, unless they actually, like, have actually put, like, 
different functionality to the amiibo for the gold Mega Man. Like it actually scans in, like in you know, like uh, like in Super Mario Maker, and it actually scans in as a gold amiibo. Then it's I wouldn't say it's completely different, but it has like it's it's a variation, but it has different features opposed to like the normal Mega Man. You get me? Yeah. It's not just a repaint. Because I would have loved to see them, you know, at least Capcom, like, actually spend time into creating an amiibo figure, especially if this is, you know, their their their, their new thing. So I was very upset with it. But okay. I mean, so, so, I'm not spending time doing anything. Um, don't get me wrong. I love Mega Man and Street Fighter, my favorite games. But, like, Capcom is just maybe sad. I got Street Fighter Five this week, but uh, it's just missing a whole lot of stuff, and it makes me sad. Yeah, I, I, I exactly. I felt like they got lazy. I don't know. I, that's just me. Okay, I, okay, guys, per, this is perfect. But let's read it in since we got a little bit of limited limited time for Austin. Um, all right, perfect. So that's exactly the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about on this podcast. Um, <laughs> that's cool. We can always go into a tangent, which is not a problem. Exactly, tangents related to Amiibo are not going to be a problem at all. So uh, one thing we want to talk about is why we chose the name Touch Base as our uh, podcast name. Um, so the obvious thing is because you touch the base of an amiibo to scan um, it into any game. Um, but and we're touching base. Yeah, you know, we're talking exactly. We're talking about this. Yeah, and we we want this to be like touching base with the community. Um, you know, we're gonna have lots of guests on here, um, lots of guest hosts, I should say. Um, and you know, I think it'd be cool to have like all sorts of input. Especially, like, you know, we've got the Amiglo's Twitter account and Amiibo Steel, and we've got, you know, a lot of people that are following us, and, uh, you know, we can work with them, and, you know, we can want to hear what they want to hear us talk about and, you know, talk about exactly. it. Right. Um, so, basically, we want this, ami- this podcast to be about the Amiibo community as a whole, not just the figures, because it's really the people that make, you know, the whole Amiibo thing so great. Um, but, For you sure. know, the, the, the figure's mm-hmm. pretty awesome, too. There's a few exceptions, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah. but you know what? Um, you know, we can always talk, we'll talk about, like, our favorite Amiibo, why they're our favorite Amiibo, things like that. Um, but, basically, we want this podcast to be a way for... Uh, the community and the community leaders, as we see them, it's not really a, there's not really a good term for it. But for you know people like um, you know Amiibo Alerts, Amiibo News, mm-hmm. well they've got their own thing going. But like uh, Amiibo Inquirer, uh, you know Gone to Chris, Evilos, all these people that are prevalent in the community. And I'm not those are just the first few that come to mind for me. I'm I'm not trying to play favorites. Here. Exactly. There's yeah. a lot of people in this community and. The fact that it's like again touching base not only with the community but the people who have created or pioneered this community because there's a lot of people who you know started it and there's a lot of people in our case like how we started Amoeba Steel was you know we got inspired by many communities including Amoeba News and Amoeba so we'd love to always get again touching base with the community and touching base on what their ideas and their opinions are so. As a community, as a whole, this would be great, especially that we're all talking to the mass of like everyone who loves to either collect them or they're just you know they just love the idea of it. Yeah, um, exactly. And so um, I think on the regular it'll be mostly myself and Josue, mm-hmm. um, and Austin will join us whenever he can. Um, Most definitely. But you know we're, we'll try our best to get these out every week. That's kind of the goal. I think right now is like once mm-hmm. a week on the podcast. Um, and this time we don't have a video to go along with it, but we might in the future. Um, so the, I guess now I'll kind of go over the uh, general topics that we're, we've kind of planned out to cover each week. Um, so we'll start out with hopefully some sort of catchy intro um, and something entertaining. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I really don't want to start off with, like, you know, Smash Announcer, like, the Touch Base Podcast. Blah, blah, right, blah. exactly. I want it to be something fun, and hopefully it won't be the same every time kind of thing, but um, each week we'll start with uh, the state of the collection um, is what we're going to call it. And so it's basically talking about each of our own personal Amiibo collections. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. What, what we have to collect, like what's left. Um, you know, do we have our pre-orders up? Like for Roy and Famicom, Rob and Ryu and all that. Um Et cetera, et cetera. So we'll talk about the state of our personal collections because um, I have a ridiculous number of 
my household right now. Um, you know, I've got, my, I've got my out of box collection, which is complete, up to date, with the exception of Animal Crossing Amiibo. I'm I've got my inbox in collection. Yeah, I've got it. I've got my entire out of box collection in one insignia travel case. Amazing. Um, yes, um, and there's a wonderful photo I posted of that all over the internet just because it made people mad and it was hilarious. Um, right, that hurt me a little bit, but it's okay. Yeah, um, I've also got a mint in box collection which is just sitting in my closet, um, and then I also have a third set of every single amiibo today oh that I good. plan on customizing and t- making them glow in some way, shape, or form. Sick. Um, That's sick, but I love it. That's so sick. So, yeah. okay, let's talk about that really quickly. Uh, okay, sure. We're going to get into it. Okay, so when you buy amiibo, how many do you pre-order? Let's say, like, now, especially that we've had pre-orders, do you pre-order three, one for your inbox, out-of-box, and one for your amiibo, amiibo lineup? Or, like, what do you do? So, um, it started out, so... I started doing Amigos, I'd say, like, I mean, I didn't start collecting till March last year, so I came into the game pretty late. Um, and it started out with me just wanting a Fox Amiibo, because Fox was my main in the original Smash, and Lucario hadn't come out yet, and Lucario's my main now, and he was in Brawl as well. Um, and Yuki was my main in Melee, but again, neither of those had come out, so I was like, okay, I want a Fox Amiibo, and I want to see what these Amiibo are about, and I couldn't find one freaking anywhere. Um, and so... I was just struggling to find the Amiibo that I wanted, and so I turned to eBay and spent way more money than I should. Oh, um, no. And, and I really wanted a Little Mac Amiibo as well, because I played... I bought myself a Wii U and bought and bought a Little Mac for $70 off eBay. Wow. Um, and you know what? I, like, I spent way more than I should on Amiibos, but... Initially, it was just a matter of me getting the ones I wanted, and then I got obsessed, and my girlfriend got really mad at me for spending <laughs> way too much money, um, which she, she was right to do. Um, mm. But it started out with just one collection of out-of-box, and then I saw how much money they were going for on eBay, and I was like, okay. like, And let's see, that random Little Mac and Captain Falcon restock that happened at Best Buy, like, randomly, um, mm-hmm. it back That's in the my... Huh? That's how I got mine. <laughs> Well, okay, that was my first time camping out, is I got word, I called the Best Buy and was told they weren't going to, like, it was just first come, first serve. That morning they were in, but they weren't going to put them on the floor until the next mor- wow. um, morning. I got there at, like, 6 a.m., waited till 10. I was the first one in line. There were, like, 10 of us there, and it was, you know, it was, I just wanted Little Mac. That's who I really wanted, and this was before I ordered mine online. I walked, we got let in at 10. We went directly to the Amiibo section where there was a guy waiting and we were like, so can we get a Little Mac? And he's like, we sold all of them last night. I'm like, wow. That's and that's cool. when I was like, screw this. I'm just going to pay and buy one online. Um, oh. Sorry, that was a long tangent. So basically, <laughs> you asked no him. How, that's when I started doing all the pre-orders. And we'll deal with a lot more of that later with tangent stories because I have lots of them. But it's <laughs> basically now that everything's kind of calmed down. I get I, So GameStop will only allow you one Amiibo per account. So I have two accounts, one for myself and one in my girlfriend's name. Um, and so whenever I and I have a particular GameStop store that I always go to, um, and they were the ones that I don't know if you guys remember when uh, Roy's pre-order got for when it was. Um, I was one of the first people to know anything about it, um, right? Because my GameStop uh, called me actually, my my friend that works there, who I won't name in case you know I don't want to get him in trouble for anything, but he called me and said. Hey, Roy pre-order is going live tomorrow at 2 p.m. and I was like, 2 p.m. Eastern, Central, Western, and he's like, it says 2 p.m. and I was like, okay, <laughs> great. And so I, that's what I posted, and then, you know, it went live from there. But um, you know, I went in and I got my two pre-ordered. Um, so basically, the way I've approached it recently. And since about, well, since Wave 4, because Wave 4 was a mess, but we'll, yeah. that's, a, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> that's um, a whole segment for it. And we'll have an entire podcast dedicated to the, the debacles of the past. Um, mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, so basically I'll go in and I will pre-order two of every Amiibo for myself, um, like GameStop, Target, Walmart, whatever. Although, like, I basically ignored pre-orders for anybody but me. Stop and Toys R Us now. Um, and Toys R Us never really did pre-orders. They just kind of did like, hey, it's up and you can buy it kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But GameStop and the places that I do pre-orders, I order myself two, and then I go and get those because I don't want to, you know, take all the stock of a particular store. So I'll get my two pre-ordered, and then day of, I'll hit up like a different store or two, and I'll try to get my my third one for my customs. Um, and you know, that way I'm not like if I could pre-order three, you know, that way I guarantee myself stock. But you know what? That kind of gets rid of the thrill of the hunt, and you know, the hunt's basically gone nowadays anyway. Yeah. So, you know. I got to get my thrill where I can, know where I can. So exactly. Well, let's go into it a little bit. You know, like how do you guys actually feel about the hunt? If anything, it's not much of a hunt as it, as it was before, in the sense that you know, back like before, it wasn't like you know, we didn't have pre-orders. Like we did, like for a couple occasions, like when the card came out, uh, they we did have pre-orders for those, but we didn't necessarily have pre-orders for a couple other ways until uh, just recently. So how do you guys feel like the hunt? I didn't necessarily start hunting until way four. Way four was probably when I just started. So, I mean, I started late too. I didn't necessarily start in the earlier way. So it became pretty hard to get like anything like Lucina or anything. I didn't know of it. I've heard of it, like especially everything that happened at GameStop with their online pre-orders, and that is a bummer. But um, how do you guys feel about it? Like, you know, like do you guys have? Do you guys miss the old days where everything was? Or it's literally the online pre-orders that happen like at 3 a.m. in the morning, and you had to like get your order in, or do you? Keep the pace. What? So how do you guys feel about it? I'm so glad that I don't have to do that anymore. Um, <laughs> to be able to just go on Amazon in comfort, knowing that you know it's gonna be there. Amazon always gives enough notice, so if the stock was short, I can always get something. But yeah, camping out for stuff. The only thing I camped out for was uh, not even an Amiibo. It was for Majora's Mask 3DS XL. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it was cold. And that, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'll ever do it again. I appreciate the experience. <laughs> but uh, definitely, I don't think I'd ever, I'd ever do that again, just thanks to online stock, except when stores decide not to do that, like GameStop. That did upset me a little bit. Uh -huh. Right. No, that's right. Um, our our hunt was a uh, my first hunt actually was the King DDD and Nest restock that we had during the summer. That was probably my first hunt. Really? Um, okay, that was that was interesting. But like that was your first hunt, and that late in the game. It was that late in the game. Um, because I didn't know. See, I started collecting not necessarily like you know thinking, okay, do I want to collect every amiibo? But then, I don't know, I bought a couple three, like I caught, like my first Amiibo was Fox, it was a European packaging, um, the first one was Fox, and then I bought Ike, and then we bought others, and it was like, okay, I like, you know, the idea of buying Amiibos, it just gave me like, I don't know, it became like an addiction, if anything. Oh, yeah. And, and then, yeah, no, then we camped out that day, we literally stayed out for four in the morning, waiting for GameStop to open up. They didn't open until 10, so we were out there for, like, a good amount, like, six hours. It was okay. cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for for me, I'm not going to lie, I missed the hunt, in a way. Um, so I'm glad that, I'm not going to lie, I'm very glad that I can walk into, like, a Best Buy, and, you know, there's just some Marth sitting on the shelves, and Falco, and all these Amiibo are just everywhere now. That's what we've been wanting for pretty much since they came out, let's be honest. Um, and that's great. And awesome, but when it comes to ones that are new and like they're about to come out, I kind of wish they were still doing waves for the reason. And I'm not—I'm probably the only person that likes this. I like store exclusivity. Mm -hmm. and, and hear me out. I don't like Palatina being Amazon exclusive because that's complete crap. Exactly, because um, like no restock, like it's been forever. I and I was working. I was traveling for work when the uh, pre-orders and when the ordering window happened. So I missed Palutena completely. Wow! So I had to source. Uh, I farmed out my Amigos talents to uh, the Amiibo trading uh, subreddit sure. and wow. said, "Hey, I'll make you an Amigo if you send me a mint in box Palutena." And people were like, "Heck yeah!" So I got, my, you know, I was able to do it that way, but. You know, it's not exactly a fair trade from as far as what I charge, but um, but I wanted it bad enough that I, it was worth it. But so I like store exclusivity because what it meant what it meant was in the mornings, like you had to time, like okay, I'm gonna cite Wave Four as a prime example. You had Greninja at Toys R Us, 
you had Ness at uh, GameStop, and then you had uh, Jigglypuff at Target. And so I had the rounds, like I had my, my loop set up for, okay, Target opens the earliest, they open at 6. Um, Toys R Us open at 9, GameStop opens at 10. So I would be out at like 4, for way 4, I was out at 4 a.m. at Target, and I was 4th in line, and they had 3 Lucina and 3 Robin. Oh my god. So I'm, but one of the people in front of me didn't want Robin. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so, so I wound up with a Robin, but no Lucina. And so as soon as that was done, you know, like, there's a dog. Um, <laughs> so as soon as that was done, you know, I went to, um, I went to the Toys R Us, which is literally like, you know, a hundred yards away and went to the Toys R Us and got in line there. And I was still like sixth or seventh in line. Um, Cause it was still so freaking early. Wow. You know, we we're, two and a half, three hours away from opening. But what I really loved about these getting up early is like every time I would go on the hunt, there was always the same group of people, plus or minus a few people that were new or, you know, hadn't been there for the previous one. But like everyone would bring their 3DS. Like I would bring my Amiglos and like we would all like, we'd have smash tournaments and stuff. And, you know, we'd hang out, we'd play Pokemon, like whatever games we had at the time, you know, we'd sit and play together. And right. I got to know a bunch of people that I otherwise wouldn't have met. Um, and then, like, I met Flapsnapple, the head uh, mod at the R Amiibo. And, like, because he lives, and we found out he lives like 10 minutes from me. Oh. Um, so, like, I missed that part of it. And honestly, the thrill of being of going in there, I don't miss getting up at four in the morning to go mm-hmm. sit and be disappointed and not get the Amiibo you want. That's not what I miss at all. <laughs> Because I mean, it's really cool about that. Yeah, like you're talking about, you know, like you get to meet a lot of people, especially like a lot of different collectors. A lot of people like collect I mean, but for different reasons. And it's kind of cool to get their input, but especially <laughs> that getting to know new people and kind of like getting to know everything that they do, what they play, what it's it's really a nice thing because you get to meet new people. Some of them becoming your friend, and yeah, no, it's a great experience for sure. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we lost Austin. He told us he was going to have to go. Um, But yeah, so as far as ordering goes, like, I do miss the hunt. And like, you know, now we're getting like, oh, Roy's going to come out and Ryu and Famicom Rob. And like, it's sort of like a wave seven or six, depending on how you view it. But it's, you know, it's not like they called it like, okay, this wave we're going to have Roy, Ryu, Famicom Rob, like uh, everybody else, you know? I don't know what's beeping. What's beeping? Oh, crap. Hostway got disconnected. Hold on, guys. Having some technical difficulties. Okay. Hostway should be back momentarily. All right, you back? I am. Perfect. Okay, I don't know what happened. That was weird. Yeah, no idea. No idea. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you heard. What was the last thing you heard from me? Um, go, we we're just going back into the online orders. Okay, yeah. So basically, um, you know, I missed the fact that they were in waves. That was basically my point is that, you know, we're, we're getting these like single amiibo up to like two or three releases, but I missed the fact that they were in waves because, and the store exclusivity, you know, I like that Roy is GameStop exclusive, but. None of the others are, so I can just go to GameStop and get them all. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, comes, it comes with its like it comes with its advantages <laughs> and like disadvantages because you know we have exclusivity for like certain amiibos, and that's kind of like the only way of getting them through yeah. that one store. Like Bowser Junior, I can't find one in my store at all. Yeah, same. I can't find Bowser Junior anywhere. Um, it, it's crazy. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. Yeah, so like Bowser, I haven't seen a Bowser Jr. in the wild, as they say, since launch day. Mm -hmm. For real, or at least in my case, on the week of. I didn't get one until Sunday, which it came out on Friday. I didn't get one until Sunday. So it's crazy. I haven't seen one ever since. Yeah. All right, so back to kind of what we'll cover every week. We went on a bit of a tangent there. Um, (laughs) So... Like we said, state of the collections, what do we have left to collect, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing we wanted to do was a custom Amiibo. So, you know, we'll pick whatever custom has come out. 
or been announced or shown whatever in the past like week and like which ones are favorite and you know I I'm not gonna lie I'm just really gonna want to pick my own most of the time but uh, that's why you guys are here uh, Austin and Josue to uh, dissuade me otherwise. And it's always, you know, we can always talk about your amazing new photos, which is, they're all, they're all amazing, like, um, so yeah, we'll always feature those, for sure. Yeah, but, um, you know, if I happen to be the only customizer that has put one out in the past week, then, you know, that's what it is, but, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm not going to lie, Gone to Chris is much, much more prolific than I am, and so uh, she's probably going to have a lot more customs of the week than I ever will, but... <laughs> Um, sorry, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, and that's what she does. Is she is an, she's a customizer. That's what she does, I believe, for a living currently. Um, whereas I do the uh, do mine all in my free time, um, what little of it there is. And so, yeah, we'll do a custom amiibo of the week, um, and then we'll talk about like um, any amiibo games we're currently playing, um, or any amiibo that might be coming out soon. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure the games we're currently playing um, will. Oh, crap. Okay, hold on. Hopefully we got disconnected again. <sighs> okay, so um, basically I I'll just continue on because we have a. Are you back? Yes, I am back. Okay. Perfect. So it keeps streaming while you're gone, by the way. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Anyway, so basically what I was saying is custom amiibo of the week and then we'll talk about amiibo games we're currently playing so like and that'll lead into tangents i'm sure um any amiibo that are coming out soon we could talk about pre-orders uh things like that which it seems like this podcast is essentially a tangent cast um mm. but yeah so and then uh any amiibo news like game announcements new functionality rumors uh etc and then uh one thing we definitely want to do is, since this is supposed to be about the community, is uh, any giveaways that our listeners should enter that we know about, um, whether that's, like, Amiibo Alerts is doing, like, a ridiculous Zelda bundle giveaway with the uh, Zelda Universe, with, like, the Twilight Princess HD bundle, plus Amazing. Ganondorf Link and Zelda Amiibo, like, all that for free is mm. absolutely ridiculous. Um, and then, like, Amiibo News has a bunch going. I don't, I think they've still got the Detective Pikachu giveaway going from Gondacris. That's um, crazy, yeah. I think they do. And then, um, like, Kick Ash has been doing a bunch of giveaways, although um, I think she's kind of taking a break from the scene for a little while. She's got some personal stuff going on. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, there's a lot. And the Amiibo Steel, of course, always does giveaways as well. Um, and mm -hmm. But, like, there's all sorts of awesome giveaways for Amiibo and Amiibo-related stuff going on. So we want to kind of give a shout-out to everybody that's got giveaways going on. Um, and then, uh, that's pretty much it for like a daily topic, but, uh, we want to talk about once a month, um, we were going to try to feature a particular custom artist and they'll be like our artist of the month or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and they'll come on the podcast as a guest host with us for at least one podcast, maybe more if they want. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so like, it could be anyone from like Android Amiibo alerts to Jason, either of the Jason's at Amiibo news an mm -hmm. Amiibo Inquirer and the Nintendo Inquirer website, uh, the Toys for Games guys, uh, Bobby of the Geek Guru, the Geek Guru, which they do uh, the Geek Cast and um, the Ink Strike podcast, and he's been all over a bunch of different podcasts that I listen to personally. Um, he and then Toby, who's Amiibo Workshop on Instagram, he also did mm -hmm. that awesome Wolf Link or Wolf Amiibo, not mm -hmm. Wolf Link, but Wolf like Star Wolf. Mm -hmm. That came out a couple weeks ago. Like, he's amazing. freaking awesome. Um, his customs are amazing. amazing um, yeah. Like the mods of our amiibo are a possibility. You know, like anybody that has anything to do with amiibo and the community, um, we'd love to have on here. We'll um, bring him over. Yeah, Evilos, Kick Ash, you know, uh, Xanark and Sky. Exactly. Assaultus. Um, I'm trying to think of like everybody I can. Uh, y Rock. You're your game changers custom yeah exactly like there's tons and tons of people that will hopefully be on here eventually but um that's kind of where we're headed um Perfect. and then the other thing we want to do is like once a month host some sort of community gaming event whether it's a smash tournament splatoon matches you know mario kart races whatever 
and we can talk about how that turned out on the following podcast. Um, <clears throat> that's perfect. I love it. Yeah, and so that's kind of the format of the Touch Base podcast, and uh, it's pretty much it for it. what we wanted to cover tonight. Um, yeah. We've been recording for quite a while now. I don't really know exactly how long, but... Cool for a while, but at least, you know, we, we know what we want to do, which is great, especially that, you know, so we start up some conversations, which is great. That's very organic and very natural, which I like. Um, sorry that I'm talking kind of low right now. Um, I'm currently trying to, like, because I just got home a little while ago, so I'm kind of like everyone's sleeping, so I'm just oh, okay. trying to make sure, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I um, turned your volume up so that you're a little louder now. In the oh, podcast. perfect. So, yes. So let's do that. So, yeah, for sure. Okay, so Sunday evening, at what time would you be available? So we can at least start on episode one. Um, well, hold on. Before We'll talk about that after the, the stream is live. Um, Perfect. In the stream in a second. Um, but I guess we'll end the podcast. You know, we talked about where Touch Base is coming from. Um, this is episode zero, or level zero, as we're calling it, which, mm-hmm. by the way, I did not come up with the name Touch Base. It came from a guy on the Geek Guru Facebook page, which, if you have heard of it, go check it out. There's a great community there. Um, I forget mm-hmm. his name, but he suggested it, so I can't take credit for it. So <laughs> I, I, like I it. posted it and saying, hey, I want to do an Amiibo-related podcast. Suggest some names, and the guy said Touch Base, and I was like, that's awesome. I love um, it. That's awesome. You know, we we yeah, were also it was that or amiibo time, which I liked, but it was a little childish for mm-hmm. what we were going with. And I love it. I, I mean, I love it too. I'm not gonna lie. You know, we could have just taken the Adventure Time theme song and like dubbed in us just going like amiibo over top of Adventure. <clears throat> I, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it would have been hilarious. But you know, for I like really like the name Touch Base that we went with. And uh, yeah, same, same. You no, know, it's a lot more meaning. Exactly. And so yeah, so this will be the Touch Base podcast, and I'm Mason. And I'm Josue. And hope to see you guys next time, and we'll come out with a better outro in the future. For sure. All right. All right.